Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again to Things With Wheels. Uh, you know, as you know, I have a lot of EV content on the channel. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was, uh, you know, using the adapter, the uh, North American Charging Standard to the CCS uh, adapter. A lot of Ford buyers uh, are thrilled to know that we can now use the Tesla network and just frame a reference, uh, this is my truck. I've got a bunch of other videos on it already, but uh, I have a 2023 Lightning. Mine's an XLT, standard range. But, uh, you know, one of the decision makers or one of the factors for me is when Ford made the agreement with Tesla uh, that we could use the Tesla chargers because I believe them to be probably the most reliable and overall the most trustworthy, uh, you know, of all the uh, chargers in the country. We do have another EV, so we've got some experience. And it's a, it's a slow, antiquated one. It's the... Uh, the, the Volkswagen e-golf which I happen to love that car but that's that's a topic for another day and there's videos on both the truck and the e-golf uh, elsewhere on my channel but what I want to talk to, about today was the adapter so you may have heard when you buy a Ford product now uh, be it a Mach-E or the F-150 Lightning uh, Ford's going to give you the adapter what you may not know is it doesn't come for months uh, and months so I bought this truck. It was about a six month wait for the adapter to come. I don't have it yet. So what I elected to do is I ordered the A to Z uh, adapter from order to arrival was exactly three weeks. They're made in Canada. Uh, they were really great to stay in touch. It arrived safely and the contents were exactly what you see here. A nice, uh, nice case padded uh, comes with the instruction book, of course. And then here's our adapter. And I don't mean to be too simplified, but I know there's a lot of new EV users that are considering a Lightning uh, or another, you know, EV. Uh, so the way this works, this is the CCS plug that goes into the Ford end. This is the Tesla side, the North American charging standard side that uh, would allow you to uh, use the cord at the Tesla charger. So this particular one, first thing I'll tell you is this dude is hefty. Uh, it feels like you've got a thing in your hands. Uh, I have to think it weighs n north of a pound. I haven't weighed it yet, to be fair. Uh, but it feels sturdy and well-made, and when I've used it at a Tesla charger, uh, it has, uh, you know, it gives me the feeling that it's got something going on. So what would happen is it plugs into the truck. In fact, I'll show you right over here. So my charge, charge door is right here, also known as the charge door for uh, people that don't speak well. Uh, so flop that door down and now you got the uh, CCS which you'd use at like Electrify America as an example so this plug's going to go in this way uh, when it goes in it's going to snap in place this is the release to get it out something uh, that I think is a little bit unique about the A to Z is it actually has this latch built into the bottom that's a little finicky I will admit so what happens is this goes in this way the uh, Tesla plug or the North American charging standard plug goes into this end you're then on the uh, bottom side, you're gonna lock this dude in place with this latch, and it's all gonna be plugged in. Uh, I am unable to plug and charge yet at Tesla uh, charging stations. As I understand it, that's an update that my truck has yet to receive. Uh, so that, that's a challenge. So I use the Tesla app, which is awesome. It's very, very easy to se select the station. But at any rate, <clears throat> at any rate, one of the things you need to know is that you've got this, this latching mechanism. It's got to be completely latched or this thing won't work. Nothing will come through it. But uh, it is incredibly easy. Uh, like many, uh, you know, new to using the Tesla charger, I had a little anxiety when I went. and uh, But it was super easy to use. Jumped right up. Uh, and I was cranking, I think the charger that I was at, and I was at, on my Lightning, somewhere around 60% state of charge. I know that's always a question. Uh, I plugged in and I think jumped to something in the 140 to 150 kilowatt uh, range very, very quickly. And I only stayed for a few minutes. It was really more of a proof of concept than me trying to fill it because I home charge most of the time. So, of course, it comes down to the question that I get asked all the time. Would I buy this adapter again? Absolutely 100% yes. Uh, I think A to Z builds a great product. I'm not sponsored in any way by them. And if I put a link down below later, uh, you know, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get anything from you buying one. But I do believe that the way the EV community grows is for people to have information, right? The more comfortable you are, the more you know up front, then you make an informed uh, purchase 
and uh, and you know it, it grows with happy people that are pleased with their purchase I for one with the standard range uh, f-150 just as an example I couldn't be happier with it I went in eyes wide open I understand what it'll do and what it won't and it's great uh, same with the e-golf uh, that's an older uh, EV but I'm thrilled with it so anyway I would absolutely buy this adapter again highly recommend it and I hope uh, the information I provided is something that maybe will help a prospective purchaser of a Ford product that's thinking about Tesla charging and how that impacts them I hope that helps a little bit any questions that you have please post them down below I if you look at my videos generally when somebody posts a question I try to get right back to them uh, please comment definitely subscribe I've got a lot more content coming and, uh, and please like the video. It helps me a ton to uh, grow a following. And, uh, you know, hey, I do this as a hobby because I love to share information. So love to hear from you. I appreciate you watching Things with Wheels. Have a great day.